Leveraging watch lists and scanners to stay updated on market movements is essential for staying informed throughout the day. In this video, I'll guide you through the process of creating customized watch lists and configuring scanners within Trader Workstation. So let's kick off the scanning process to see what's moving. To start setting up watch lists and scanners, the first thing we're going to do, like with any blank slate here on Trader Workstation, is we're going to go up to the new window button. So I'm going to click that, and then I'm going to go down to watch lists. We'll start here. So here we have a blank watch list. So the first thing I'm going to do on this watch list is I'm just going to type in a few different symbols. Okay, so now we have five different symbols here. We have Tesla, Apple, AMD, NVIDIA, and Microsoft. So now depending on the stocks that we have in this watch list, maybe they are part of the tech sector, maybe they're part of the energy sector, I want to rename my watch list so that it corresponds with the stocks that are in the watch list. So right now up at the top here, it just says watch list, but if I right click on it, I can go to rename watch list. And I'm gonna name this my five favorite stocks. And I'm gonna hit okay. So now here's our first watch list. We have our five favorite stocks. So now what you'll notice when you open a watch list on Trader Workstation is that it will automatically give you the financial instrument field, it will give you the ask field, and it will give you the last field. Now, since those are the only three fields that I have in my watch list, Trader Workstation will populate multiple other columns that you can build other watch lists from. So I could come in here and I could type in new watch lists on each one of these columns. But if I go into settings and I add different columns to this sheet, and let's say that I have 10 different columns, then Trader Workstation is really only gonna actually have one financial instrument column, one ask column, and one last column. The only reason these other ones are here is to fill up space. So now let's say I wanna add some different columns to this watch list. I wanna know more than just the financial instrument, the ask, and the last. So I'm gonna right click on an empty space, and I'm gonna to go to settings. So now I'm in the settings section where I can customize what columns I have in my watch list. So right now on the left hand side, you'll see the shown columns. This says that we have financial instrument, we have the ask, and we have the last price. Now on the right hand side are all the other things that I can choose from. So I can come in here and I can hit the plus sign next to one of these lists and I'll get a drop down menu like this. I can also just type in the top field here what I'm looking for. So let's say that I wanna know the change percentage of the stock. I'm gonna type in change and I'm gonna do change percent. I'm gonna hit add. Now let's say I wanna know the volume. So I'm gonna type in volume. Now I have a bunch of different volume I can choose from. I'm just gonna do standard volume and I'm gonna hit add. Now let's say I'm an options trader and I wanna know the call put volume on this stock. I'm gonna select call put volume and I'm gonna say add. Now let's say I wanna know the price of the current view app. So I'm gonna select view app and I'm gonna select add. So now we have some additional things we've added to our columns list. Now I can change the order in which these appear on my watch list. So right now they're in this order. If I click on one of them and I hit this up arrow here, I can move it up or move it down. So I can rearrange these as I best see fit. Now in this tab here, I can change the colors. So different uptick color, downtick color, ticker row, and so on. I'm gonna go back to market data columns and I'm just gonna hit apply and then I'm gonna hit okay. So now you'll notice we have some additional columns that we added. You'll also notice that there is still room to add two different watch lists to this page right here because we haven't added columns clear across here. But what I can do is I can go in here and stretch these out. And you'll notice one of them just disappeared. So I can come in here, I can stretch this one out. I'll stretch this one out, that one, that one, and that one. So now we have a watch list that has the ticker symbol, the ask price, the volume, the last price, the VWAP price, the call put volume and the change percentage. Now, if I want to sort one of these columns, all I have to do is click on the column that I want to sort by. So I'll just click on ask and it will sort by the ask price. Now, right now it has the highest ask price in the top row, but if I want to sort it so that it is the lowest price in the top row, I can click ask one more time. And you'll notice that the lowest price is now at the top and the highest price is at the bottom. And I can do this with any of the rows in this watch list. Now, let's say I want to continuously sort by a specific column throughout the day. So maybe I want to sort by the change percent as the day progresses. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to this change column here, and I'm going to go into one of the rows, and I'm going to right click on it. Then I'll get this little drop down. I can go down to sort right here, and I can go to continuous sort by change percent. I can go to ascending, and I can sort all groups. This will sort this column, and it will continue to sort this column throughout the day. 
Now let's say I only have a watch list up and it's not corresponding to any charts or anything like that, but I wanna check out a chart for a specific stock on this watch list. I can right click on the ticker and I can go to charts. And from charts, I can click on advanced chart. And this will populate a chart for NVIDIA. So if I wanna check out a chart really quick, I can just pop this out, bring it up over here, and then I can of course close it. Now let's say I wanna add an additional watch list. So there's this plus symbol up here, I'll go ahead and press that. And I could add one from scratch again, just like this one, or I could add my portfolio. So we can go ahead and add the portfolio watch list. And this will track anything that's been taken in the portfolio. So I'm gonna go back to my five favorite stocks. So now let's say I wanna add a scanner. Now I can either go up to new window and I can choose scanners and select a scanner from here and have it populate in a new window. Or to save on space, I can stay on this watch list and I can choose this plus symbol right here. Now I'm gonna hit the plus sign and instead of choosing from watch list or portfolio, I can go to mosaic market scanner. This will bring up the scanner library. Now in here, I can go ahead and choose from one of these scanners that's already built. So I'm gonna to go to US movers and this gives me an idea of what's in it. And I can go ahead and hit next and done. So now we have the US movers scanners added to our monitor window with our watch list. So if I wanna go back to my watch list, I can click here. And now if I wanna to go to my scanner, I can click here. Again, you can populate these in two separate windows. You can go up to new window and you can choose scanners and you can add it as a new window. But to save on space, this is how we're gonna do it. Now in the upper right hand corner of this scanner, there is this edit scanner button. I'm gonna click that and it will bring back one of the windows that appeared right before we added this to our chart. So in this window, I have the ability to customize my scanner. So right now this scanner has the financial instrument, the last price and the change percentage. But let's say that I'm interested in seeing the volume. I'm gonna to go to add field and I'm gonna type in volume and I'm gonna choose volume. So now you'll see that a volume column has been added to the scanner. Now, since this is a scanner, in each one of these fields, we can filter it. So let's say that I'm only interested in stocks that are $50 to $100. I can go to filter on the last price and I can type in 50 to 100 and I can hit done. Now you'll notice the last price of all of these stocks are between $50 and $100. I'm gonna go back to edit scanner. And now let's say that I'm more of a visual person. So in this display section, I can change what it looks like as far as how each column portrays the numbers. So if I hit this little drop down arrow next to values on last, I get this drop down list. And in this drop down list right now, it's the value. So it's telling me in numbers what the last price was. But maybe I wanna see it in a bar. So if I click bar, it's going to change the price into a bar price. But I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna change it back to values. And I'm gonna try it one more time with the change percentage. And I'm gonna use a gradient. And now you'll notice that the change percentage is no longer in numerical form, but rather in a gradient. Let's go ahead and add one more scanner here. So I'm gonna go up to the plus sign and I'm gonna click mosaic market scanners. Now in this section right here, I have stock selected and US selected, but if I click more, I can also choose things like options, I can choose futures, indexes, etc. Now let's say that I'm an options trader. I can go into this search section and I can type option. And you'll notice that I get this options volume scanner. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that and I'm gonna hit done. And now I have an option scanner. So I've got the put call volume, I've got the options volume, I've got the implied volatility percentage and so on. Now, if I go back to edit scanner, I can customize this. So I'm gonna click customize. And similar to the other scanner that we built, I can do the same thing here. So if there's a certain percentage of implied volatility I want in my option scanner, I can change it in here. If there's a certain amount of options volume I prefer to trade, I can change it in here. Again, we can go into the filter section. I can change the number. I can go into this value section under display and I can change how I want it to look. And I can also go into sort and change how it's sorted. But remember, you can also click on the top of your columns to change how things are sorted. And that's how you add a watch list and scanner to your Trader Workstation platform. With many things in Trader Workstation, it is fully customizable. So you can add whatever columns and rows you want to add to this. You can filter how you best see fit. So play with it and decide what works best for you. But if you have questions, drop us a comment and we would be happy to help you out.